Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson, and as this video goes live, Nikon is formally announcing the Z6 III, which I know many of you have been waiting for, or at least curious about. Uh, and it, for the first time, they brought me into the fold. I've agreed not to release any information until just now, but I've gotten to have some, some chats with the folks at Nikon and some deep detailed discussions and some looks at the specs of this thing in advance. So I'm gonna just run through what I think is exciting about it and uh, then I'll give you some pros and some cons. But I think it's a really, really great camera for a whole bunch of people. So we'll talk through it. I'll try to go pretty quickly. I've kind of synthesized some information from its spec sheet press release, my meetings with the folks at Nikon. You know, the, the big highlights for the 6.3 are this new partially stacked sensor. It's the first time ever they're doing a partially stacked sensor. It's not a fully stacked sensor with no shutter like the Z9, Z8, uh, and that lets them keep the cost down a little bit, but still keep the read speed insanely high to do some really, really nutty things. It's a 24.5 megapixel sensor, and I know that may, be, that may be a turnoff for some who are hoping for a little bit more resolution, but I gotta say, the quality that I've been getting out of the ZF with its 24 megapixel sensor and that I got for years with 12 megapixel sensors even, you know, with, with super resolution and some of the other tools that we have in our kit today, the ability to increase that resolution without really losing any quality is pretty amazing. We'll talk about that towards the end of this video. One thing that's great about it being lower resolution is that you get better low light performance. I, I think most people probably know, but maybe not everyone, that the less megapixels you put per se square centimeter or square millimeter on the sensor's surface, the less noise you tend to generate as you turn up the gain on the sensor. Only so much light comes into the sensor as we crank that ISO, we're essentially turning up gain, we're amplifying the signal that the sensor pulls in, the light source. And when you're trying to pack lots of megapixels into the same amount of space, you wind up generating more noise as you turn up that gain. So lower megapixels equals better noise performance. And <clears throat> I haven't gotten one in my hands to test yet, but Nikon says that this is the best low light sensor that they've ever produced. And it has natural settings from 100 ISO to 64,000 ISO. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's got ultra fast readout from that partially stacked nature tied to the same Xpeed 7 processor that you've got in the Z8 and the Z9. So it gets the brains and the fast processing power. And that's allowing it to do advanced subject detection a la the Z8 and Z9. Uh, with nine potential subjects, it does not have bird detect. It's, it's gonna be very reminiscent of how the Z8 launched before it got the firmware update with the bird detect autofocus. But you're gonna have 3D detection, wide area detection, auto area detection all with nine different subjects that you can choose. So animal, all the different vehicles, people. Um, it has the ability to do minus 10 exposure value autofocusing. That's a equivalent to, it's, it's, it's better than the Z8 and the Z9. I've been finding that the ZF does insane uh, low light autofocusing. I think that the, the Z6 III is going to be that, maybe even a little bit better. Now that's, that minus 10 EV is with a 1.2 lens, but that's the kind of thing that's enabling these cameras to autofocus through 10, 16 stops of neutral density, work at night autofocusing stars and low lit scenes. It's just crazy, the low light autofocus capabilities that have been baked into these new Z cameras. Another huge selling point for the camera is its viewfinder. It apparently has the brightest, most color-capable uh, viewfinder yet put into a mirrorless camera. Everybody that looks through this is apparently just stunned by it. I can't wait to look through it myself. It, it has, it's the first camera with 4,000 nits of brightness. So if you're out on a really bright scene, you're gonna be able to see really, really well through the viewfinder. It has uh, 5,760 lines of resolution, very, very high resolution sensor, and it's able to do ultra wide color output. It can cover the DCI P3 uh, gamut. So that's pretty cool. Like the ZF, which has just blown my mind, it has 
up to eight stops of in-body image stabilization, and you can key the image stabilization to the focus point. So if you're focusing over on the edge of the screen, it's gonna focus the, the in-body image stabilization where the focus point is to maximize image stabilization on that part of the sensor. That's a first in the ZF, that carries through to the Z63, and I have used it uh, to insane results. I was shooting um, like this waterfall image that I captured in Scotland just handheld. I'm walking along a bridge. There's this ravine with this beautiful waterfall. I had my 24 to 120 and I shot this at I think 75 millimeters at a half second handheld, not even braced on anything, just handheld. And it's, it's mind bending. So the image stabilization really does let you do things without a tripod that you wouldn't necessarily have been able to do before. Now remember, Anything that's moving is going to get blurry. You can use that to your advantage in things like waterfalls and with things that are moving that you want to blur motion, but moving subjects are going to get blurred even if you know, you're shooting a half a second. But it's crazy that we can hold the still part of the world still all the way down to that with a longer lens that way. It's just a whole new level of image stabilization. The partially stacked sensor is letting them get crazy frame rates, uh, plus pre-release capture like the Z8 and Z9. You can activate the setting where you go into that, that higher continuous frame rate mode where it's a JPEG only mode, and you can tell that you want to capture a second before you hit the shutter. If you're holding the shutter halfway down and then you hit it because something happens like the bird flies from the nest, the second you hit it, it's already been recording a continuous loop of frames to the card and that says save the last second plus however long after you let go of the shutter. So, and it'll do that at 120 frames a second in DX mode in JPEG. It'll do it at 30 or 60 frames per second, full sensor readout, uh, full resolution JPEG. And then it's able to do up to 20 frames per second, uh, full raw output with the electronic shutter. It's a little bit slower with the, with the mechanical shutter, but with the electronic shutter, it'll do up to 20 frames per second. So very similar to the Z8, Z9. Pretty cool beans. It gets the Z8 level build quality and weather sealing and temperature resistance, which is pretty cool because these cameras are built bomb proof. I thought the old Z6, uh, original Z6 and Z7, have, have taken some insane abuse from me over the years and just kept ticking without even a hiccup. Uh, and the Z8, Z9 are bulletproof cameras in my experience. So pretty cool. I mean, for, for decades, I've been taking Nikons to extreme places, including the top of Denali and Kilimanjaro, and they have never uh, let me down. So one thing it gets that I think is really exciting and you may not hear from a lot of people, but for those who like to use either you know, antique or modern manual focus lenses, this thing gets the, the subject detection and zoom capabilities in manual focus that the ZF has. And they are insane. I'm gonna do a video this week for approaching the scene on how I love to use the ZF's manual focus subject detection and why it makes it feel like cheating working with the lens like this Voigtlander 51.0, you know, ultra wide aperture lens. Without it, it's very difficult to manual focus a lens that's an f1.0 or Nikon's knocked the 58.95. But what this essentially enables you to do is use your subject detection modes while you're in manual focus. And the minute that the camera sees an eye or a face, it, it throws a square up that you can see. And if you hit a program button, I use OK on the ZF, Whoop, it zooms to that eye and tracks it in the frame as you manually focus it perfectly. You can use peaking, and then the minute you hit the shutter, whoop, it goes back to full framing, you just fire away, knowing that you're perfectly focused with that manual focus lens. It's the only camera ever was the ZF to have this capability, and it just makes it a joy to work with manual focus lenses. It's this fun, I, I love using the 51.0 on this camera. The Z63 is going to enable you to do that uh, with a little more you know, modern version of the camera, not this retro style. I love the retro style, don't get me wrong, but the, Z8, the Z63 is gonna bring some more stuff. Uh, you get dual card slots. It's, it's CF Express B plus SD. Now, if you're going to shoot to both cards, remember that the SD is going to slow you down. I, I don't ever tend to worry about CF Express B cards. They're just built bomb proof. I use the SD card to, to record video. Um, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more affordable. 
uh, than the Z8 and the Z9. Uh, it's it's 1.65 pounds, a smaller footprint, uh, a lighter weight camera to throw in your bag, and at 24.95 or 24.99.95, you know it's slotted a thousand dollars less than the Z8, five hundred dollars more than the ZF. With inflation, I think the pricing pretty much makes sense. It's got user modes instead of banks. I think the banks confuse a lot of people with their bookmark-like nature. Um, the user banks are a simpler way to lock in settings. So it's got three user modes on the dial. Um, I'll be doing a full setup video. Nikon's gonna work with me to try to get a Z6 III in my hands before they ship so I can have a, a user guide setup set of videos out for all of you on using it and take my time to do that. Crossing my fingers on that. It's got the variable angle flip, flip screen. Now I know there are people for whom this is a negative. For me, I love it. Why? Because it lets me turn it around and protect it from bumps and hits while I'm moving around. I actually broke my z 7 II's screen the first weekend that I had it because it was on my side and I was moving through some rocks and it just bounced out and caught a sharp rock in the screen. I always flip this around when I'm not using it just to keep the screen clean and to keep it uh, from getting damaged when I'm moving around with the camera. It also enables me, even with the, with the uh, L bracket that I've got on here, to view things at just about any angle. And if you're ever doing selfies, it's really nice to be able to flip it around and see what's going on you know, from in front of the camera. So I find it to be a great tool. For those who do vlogging and things like that, obviously it's just awesome, you'll love it. Um, I'm a huge fan. I, I haven't understood why cameras haven't had this more. I know more and more cameras are moving to it. And I think that if you play around with it a while, you'll come to love it. Um, it has pixel shift shooting, uh, like the ZF before it and like has moved to the Z8. Um, pixel shift shooting, I think, is best used in scenes where absolutely nothing's moving. There's no wind blowing leaves, there's no clouds moving through the scene, there's no water flowing. It's more of a kind of an architectural uh, capture technique. Uh, and, and I really think that, you know, I did a video recently comparing pixel shift with super resolution in Lightroom and Photoshop, and, and I really like the results from super resolution. Plus, you can apply super resolution to images you captured with cameras without pixel shift. You can do it for moving subjects. Um, so, you know, pixel shift is interesting and it's something fun to try. There's four different modes. I did a whole video about it. You can search my YouTube channel for pixel shift and find two videos that I did. One explains every mode of it. It has all four modes that the, that the ZF uh, has. It has all the pixel shift capability or the Z8. For those who are into video, the specs are pretty cool. They're, they're squeezing 6K ProRes out of the 24.5 megapixel new sensor uh, with its insane speed. The 4K modes are just awesome. I really don't do video in anything more than 4K. 4K is plenty for, for most mortal applications, unless you're gonna be cropping into the video a ton. Um, it'll do 4K 120 frame per second, so slow motion video at 4K. Um, up to APS-C, so it is going to crop down on the sensor doing 120 frames a second. It'll do 4K 60 and below, oversampled, really high quality from that full frame, um, and, 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 and you know, using the entire uh, sensor. Uh, it does 1080 240 frames per second, so 10 times slow-mo if you bring it down to, the, to sort of the cinematic 24 frames per second. Uh, at, at the full sensor, but downsampled to 1080p, which is pretty nuts. I mean, it's still really high quality, and to be able to do 10 times slow-mo is pretty cool. It has really advanced heat dissipation. Uh, they quoted doing, having no problems, doing 125 minutes recording at 4K 60 oversampled uh, 10 bit. So extended recording times, it isn't gonna cut you off every 30 minutes like the older cameras. So it's, it's, you know, I can't wait to get one in my hands. I definitely will be grabbing one. I will be doing setup videos. I will be keeping track of it because I know this is going to be a very popular camera. It's not going to make me get rid of my ZF because the ZF is just a passionate camera for me. I just love the, the, the design. I can see a lot of cameras coming and going, and I'll keep this just because I still miss the last manual Nikon that I had, the, the FM3A. 
Um, and yes, this doesn't have any user modes, and it's got the big dials, which some find archaic, but I love it. And I love using it with manual focus lenses and slowing down and, and having kind of an old school experience. The Z6 III is a modern, uh, low light powerhouse with incredible handhold ability uh, and focus capabilities and uh, an EVF that's apparently second to none. So I'm excited about it. On the pros, it's like I said, smaller and lighter. Uh, it's gonna be insane in low light. It has that crazy eight stop image stabilization capability. Um, crazy, crazy EVF, uh, super bright, super colorful, high resolution. Uh, the, finally, the next step in EVFs, although I feel like the EVF that came with the original Z6 and Z7 was so much so much better. It was about the same time as the A7R 3 came out with a better uh, EVF, and it suddenly changed the electronic viewfinder for me. The, the Z6 was the first I looked through where I was like, oh, I get how this is a revolution. Uh, Tank-like build quality. Autofocus powerhouse, having the, the same kind of subject detection minus bird detection uh, as the Z8 and Z9. Uh, 4K video powerhouse. It's got the user modes that are missing on this ZF. It's got more function buttons than this ZF. On the cons, you know, it's still a 24 megapixel sensor. And, you know, that can actually be a blessing if you work in low light a lot. And you got to remember, we have all of these amazing new ways of decanting a RAW file to add resolution in a really, really powerful way. And I, I personally love Adobe's super resolution um, that's available right from Lightroom. You just go to, into the Enhance menu in the Photo menu. Price is a little bit more than the Z6 II was when it launched, but we've had inflation. Over, it's been a while. And it seems to fit kind of right within the grand scheme of where all the Nikon cameras are. And, and, and no bird detect autofocus. But I think for the birders, for the extreme birders, you're going to be Z9, Z8 anyway. If your passion is birds, uh, those, cameras, those cameras handling and use with larger lenses, it's nice to have a little bit meatier camera with all the crazy frame rate and capability that those bring. So... I don't think you're going to find that the Z6 III is any slouch. And, you know, before there was bird detect autofocus, the Z8 and Z9 did a fine job with birds. It's just gotten a little bit crazy, particularly for birds in flight with that mode. So I'm excited about the camera. I hope that you're excited. I know a lot of you have been waiting. And I think this is going to be a really exciting camera for the Nikon faithful. Oh, and lest I forget, I'm putting uh, my affiliate pre-order link for B&H near the top of this video's description. You can click show more and see all the links to the gear that I use, recommend, and stand by. Those links help me out, so I really appreciate your using them. Uh, and, you know, I will be putting more content out as this camera starts to ship, and I'll put complete setup guides out for all the menu structure where I walk through comprehensively how to use the camera like I do for the big Nikon launches. Hopefully I can get one early so that that can be launched at the same time as they're shipping. Um, so, all right, everybody, thanks so much. And oh, also I'll be doing that video. Next ATS video is on how the ZF's manual subject detection, uh, manual focus subject detection is just so amazing for using manual focus lenses. So, Check that video out too.